Dates in Java used to be a disaster. Ever since Java 8, life has become wonderful. We right now have access to this Java time package with some easy solutions to work with dates and times in there. We're going to discuss local date, local time, local date time and zoned date time. Then after that, I will briefly talk about the date time formatter. So let's start with the basics. You can create a local date using the local date class. It is in the Java time package. The old one is the Java util date, but as I already mentioned, please don't use this anymore. It's going to make your life unnecessarily hard. So let's see how we can make a local date. So this local date LD, I'm going to say local dates, and I'm going to say either you can say now, and I'm just going to grab the current local date, or you can say off. And this off method is going to call the constructor. And there are a few options. Um, the first one is this, you can say, well, it's 2021 already. And you can say one for January, which used to be zero, I think in the old date package. So one is way more intuitive, even though Java usually starts at zero, the month January is one. So like this, you can create a local date. There's another option. You can also use the enum over here. So you can say month January. Either of these will create a local date. Then let's have a look at uh, times. So if you only want to store a time, you can use local time. And it's a very similar process, um, except for there are a few more options here. And we are just going to go for the simple one. We're just going to say it's a 14th hour and the 38 minutes. You can add seconds and nanoseconds as well, but that's too specific. And again, local time, but now will also be working. So say you want to have a date and a time, you can go for a local date time. And then again, it goes like this. But then there are way more offs, as you can see. So you can create one using a local date and a local time, or you can just specify all the fields. So year, month, date, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, etc. So I'm going to make my life easy. I'm just going to say create it from my previously created variables like this. Then there's also a zoned date and time. And that's the zoned date time class we are using. And when creating a zoned date time, there are a bunch of uh, off methods. But what is important is that you specify the zone ID. And the zone ID is something that Java has built in. So let me show you all these zone IDs that we are actually having. So I'm going to say for every string zone in, and then I can call the get available zone IDs here. I'm just going to print the zone. And you'll see there are crazy many zones available. So let me show you. zoom in a bit and you see there's all these zones so let's just take one this one looks fine to me you can see there are very many of them there we go and we're just going to use one to create a zone date time so let's go for zone date time off and then i'm going to use our local date time we just created but again i could also go for the whole uh, range of variables i would have to submit but then i'm just going to say zone idea right now and then I'm going to create it of whatever I just copied. There we go. So this is how you would create a zoned date time. And let's print all of these and just have a look, shall we? LD. Print LT. And our last one. Um, oh, I didn't uh, store it in a variable yet. That's silly. There we go. And as you can see, it is printing the date, the time, the local date, and the time, the local date, the time, and the zone. There we go. Now, there's this wonderful thing that's actually such an improvement compared to the old system. And that, it, and that is that doing calculations with this is super easy. So say I have a local date and I want to add something. I can just use the plus function. I can add months, I can add weeks, I can add days and I can add years. It's just this easy. So I would say um, plus days one. Then 
there will be a new object of a local date created with just one added to it, so the 14th of January 2021. And the reason I'm saying it like this is that it's not changing the original object. It's important to know that these local date, local time, etc., they are immutable. So their values, they are not changed upon creation. So with this, you are not changing the object that this one is pointing to. You are simply creating a new object with this value plus one day. So if you want to save this, you would have to override the original reference to the LG object with your new one. Then right now, if I were to print this, you'll see that one day will be added to it. Just that easy. There are a few things to note here, and that's actually quite funny. So if I say it's the 31st, and right now I'm going to add one month to it. What do you think that will happen? Well, what is happening? It's adding a month, but there is no February 31st, right? So what it's doing is just taking the last day of February. Let me show you that. There you go. Another question, what will happen if we print this with another month added to it? Well, then it's going to print the 28th of March, so it's not just going to continue to the next last day of the month or something. There we go. And with weeks, it is actually just printing plus seven days, so that's not too interesting. There we go. So this is a way to do calculations with it. You can also subtract, you use the minus for that. It's just really important to know that it doesn't change the original object. It's just making a new object, so a new reference with a new value. So if you want to override it, you must make sure to save it to the original value. So this is all very similar for the local time, local date time, and the zone date time, actually. Let's have a look at the local date time, because that's clearly one with a lot in there. So if you say plus, you see that there's a whole lots of options. We can do plus nanos, plus seconds, plus weeks, plus years, etc. So there's a whole bunch of other options. You can see them right here. But the most important one for right now is the off method, with which you can create the local date time or dates or time, etc. Then I have just printed the dates and times over here. And well, it's understandable, but it's possible that for whatever reason, I would want to print it in another way. I would have to use a date time formatter. There's actually two ways to go about this. And the first one I'm going to show to you is using the date uh, time formatter as an instance. So let me show you this. I'm going to say, for example, with the local date time over here, I'm going to create a date time formatter. And there are a few ways to do this. As you can see here, there are a bunch of uh, predefined formats. So for example, the ISO local date. That actually won't show too much interesting, it'll just still look like this. More interesting is the off pattern one. And there is one other one that's really interesting, and that is when you use the enum with all these standard formats in it. So the format style. Yeah, let's just start with one. Um, <laughs> let's start with the off pattern. So, all right, I'm going to say daytime formatter off pattern. And then I have to add a string pattern. And you can look up the details. There's a whole bunch of symbols that you could use. So for example, you can use the day of the month, you can use the D. If you use one, it's going to give short notation, two, longer notation, etc. This should be a string. Um, the month, if you want the uh, short version, you use this. If you want a longer version, use this, longer version, this one. And then the air, like this. Oh, that's actually not a capital. There we go. Yes. So what we can do right now, we can say we want to print this, but we want to format it. And then we are going to insert our DTF here. So if I run this, I'm just going to turn this off. So you can just see it will be the last print statement. You can see that it's going to use the dots because I specified dots in between them. But instead I could also have specified spaces like this. And oh, by the way, you can see this is, says February, it's Dutch, because it's my default system setting. You could change that too. And if I change one here, it will just use the short version, so it will be Feb, like this. You can use words in here as well, but you'd have to surround these with um, single quotes, so I like this. And then I will ignore this bit and just print these um, as the symbols. There you go. You can just put any word in here and it will just print it. There's a few others that are relevant, like the H for hour and the small M for minute. But 
let's just stick to these for now. You can look up the others whenever you need these. So these are just the most important ones to know. Just know you can create any pattern. So it doesn't punish you if you create the year multiple times or like this. It will just print something. As you can see, it just prints 21, 21, 21. Hmm, I think if I do two, it might actually only print uh, 21. Let's see. Yeah, so if as long as it sees this, it's going to be printing the full year also with three, because just three isn't really something. But if you do two, it's just going to pick the brief one. So this is a really weird date format, but if you ask for it, it will do that for you. Well, I just mentioned there are two ways to use this date time formatter. And the first one is this, ld.formatdtf. There's a second way, and that is dtf.format, and then I can actually insert ld. So this is the other way around, and this is doing the exact same thing. Weird, huh? So you need to know that there's two ways to go about this, this uh, dtf and then the format. All right, these are the must-haves for the datetime API. There's plenty of things more about it, but you'll find out about them as you go.